Good afternoon everybody and welcome to a cold January day. Well at least it is here in Germany. Um, it's actually looking beautiful outside. There's hoar frost in the trees and everything's white and rather cold. So I don't know how many layers I've got but as you can see there are a few. Um, I am doing Becky Flaherty's 52 Weeks of Florals on Instagram, her challenge of painting a flower a week. And um, I'm really loving this because flowers are something I wanted to get into in 2024. Just trying to think what year it is. Um, and today we're doing Alessa Celandine. And I've got a few marks made here on the paper, nothing too serious. Basically, I found in an old book, I found a picture and I've drawn some inspiration from that. Um, I've drawn it in watercolour pencils, as I normally do with these sorts of sketches, for the simple reason then as I add other water-soluble marks over the top with my markers and things like that, those marks will disappear and I won't have harsh pencil lines. So that's how I tend to do this. And this has got a yellow palette because lesser celandine are yellow. So, um, yeah, let's get on. Um, as you probably realise by now, especially if you've watched any of the other videos, I've only got a few. This is my other 2024 thing, is to develop my YouTube channel with some art. But I'm a mixed media artist, so I'm using lots and lots of things here. In fact, I may not use all of them, but I've got them out just in case. I'm going to start off with the leaves, because when I, when I do flowers, I always start with the leaves. Um, that just makes sense to me. You can do it whichever order you like. There are no rules. There's literally no one policing this. Brush pen, Ecoline, love them. This one's 665, which is spring green. So I start off with the leaves in the direction of growth and just get some colour down. And I'm starting off with the lightest colour. Now, this is not actually spring green as you as it comes in the tube because... You may or may not know that with these markers, you can refill them. And if you can refill things, it means you can also mix your own colours. So I have refilled this with spring green. And I've added a little dob of a little drop of red because I didn't want the harshness of the actual spring green. And you can do that, like I said, with your colours any time you like. Right, so that's the green part there. You always start with the lightest green because the way I do my leaves, that then leaves me somewhere to go to get darker colours. I'm just going to use my heat tool. This is a Ranger heat tool because I also make cards. Um, just to get that dry to both sides. Remember when you test things, if, if it feels cool to the touch, it's still wet. If it feels warm, room temperature, it's almost certainly dry. So then what I do is I've got a couple of greens here. I've got my favourite green ochre from Luminance, Caran d'Ache, but I've also got from Dermot Lightfast, Forest, Ivy and Warm Earth because I'm not quite sure which green I want to use. So I won't be requiring those. I will go straight in with the markers and I'm going to go in with a forest which gets some veins in here. I've got a few coming out like that and then the rest coming down the side as you would expect to find them. I'm going to do the same here, smaller leaf. And then what we need to do next is to identify where some of the stems are. I'm going to go in with my green ochre for that. I absolutely love this colour. It's my favourite of the greens in that set. Now, I'm going to assume the light's coming in from this way. I have a little sun cut out that I use for my Patreon students. So I'm going to put that there to remind you that the sun is coming this way. So... What we're going to do is we're going to shade with direction of growth quite lightly to begin with on this side. Just to give the leaf a bit of shape and preserving some of that. Now the leaf is going to curve like this so it's this is going to be the lightest part, which means there'll be some shade in here too. Just going to move this around a bit. 
using my little Stillman and Burn sketchbook, which I really like the paper, but it was quite expensive and I cleverly didn't read the size information, which is my fault and not theirs. And I've ended up with a really quite small one. And I thought, well, what am I going to do with this? Because it was nearly 20 euros, which is a lot for a book this size, in my opinion. Um, so I'm just using it for all of my flower pictures. Let's go back in with that green, green ochre. I keep wanting to say green oxide. Just blend that in a little bit, but not completely. So, so just a little bit of a transition of colour. Also going to add this to the edge here, which is on the light side, but yeah, just to give that some colour. So that's how we paint do a leaf. Where are we? Let's get rid of warm earth and ivy for the second and stay with this again. So just coming out along there and in the direction of growth. This one has a leaf over the top, so that would be there. So that's going to have a shade under it anyway, which also happens to be the leaf that is away from the light. And because I want that leaf to have a bit of curve, I'm just going to come in under here as well. And again, just give it a little bit of a mid-tone there. That's more in shade than anything else. Because it's only, if you've got two leaf, like at the moment we've got two leaf blobs or we had two leaf blobs. The only way we can tell one's over the other is to make one's a little bit shader, a shade, shadier. If we use proper words, people will know what we're talking about. This is a Caran d'Ache Fibralo um, marker, which I've not used before. But I thought I would do that here and just smudge it a little bit because that adds a bit more shade. I can come in and make the veins a little bit darker as well. This is not supposed to be realism, but as I'm telling my students constantly, if any of them are watching now, they will have heard this familiar refrain. It's got to be believable. It doesn't have to be realistic, but it does have to be believable. So when you look at it, you've got to be able to say, oh, that's a leaf. And over here, this is the furthest part from the light. So that will be in shadow again with the direction of the growth. And we assume the direction of the growth here is more or less where the veins are going. And on this side, vary the strength with which you put down the pencil. Sometimes you can put a bit of heavier strength, keep those veins there, keep the pencil nice and sharp. Sharpening the pencil is what gets rid of it. So the less you can do that, the better. But what you can do is turn it because there'll be as you wear one side down, that will mean the other side becomes a little bit sharper, so you can turn it round. I don't want to swamp my leaves with that dark colour, so I'm going to stop there. Okay, next thing to do is more or less the same thing. I'm not in love with that yellow, however. Let me just see. I can reach across. I have got to do this there. There'll be a video very soon about a desk redo and storage options. Right, so what I'm doing now is just filling in these daisy type petals. Not saying that word too loud because it's my dog's name. And if she hears it, she's likely to do anything. She's asleep at the moment, so yeah. We'll just leave that at that. Hopefully that lasts until we're finished. Again, we're just getting some colour down here and some shapes. You can sort of start to see a little bit of a shape there, I'm hoping. And I'm going to dry that. You don't have to dry everything, but wet on wet blends 
wet on dry layers. So if you want to blend it, leave it wet. If you want to blend another colour into it, if you're trying to dry it, uh, to get, get it to layer, then dry it and it will work for you much better. Now these lesser celandine have a bit of a cup arrangement. So I'm going in with my green, array, green ochre pencil just inside the edge of the yellow to give them a bit of a cup. Cupped effect there. Those are the same but going the other way. Love a quick sketch where you don't have to fuss over it being perfect or being exact. We are not doing this for the Royal Botanical Society. Like so. Now in the middle, we need something a bit different. I'm going to grab this uh, Lyra Green Earth because I want to do a smudgy center. Green Earth, it's, yeah, this is not the color I want. I want the color that's on the cap, but the, but the actual color of that is totally, totally different, which is now leaving me without a color that I want. Hmm. Let me see here what we've got. That's better. Try that one. And I'm smudging while it's wet. I'll give you the color in a second. And make it a bit jagged because these are a little bit jagged. Sorry, just waiting for the panic to subside. This was a Lyra Aqua Brush Duo as well, and it's gold ochre, so not green earth, even though the color of the lid is what we want, it's not the same as is actually needed. So when that's dry, I'm going to go in with a brown. This one's a brown ochre. Let's see if this works. Nope, too much the same colour. This is sort of how it is sometimes. I try a warm earth 70%. What I'm after here now is to get some texture in that centre bit. And also with the green ochre, some stems that come into this centre part. I think they're all joined on. It's quite important with flowers um, if they're close up is to try to make sure that they're all joined to something. Going to, I've got a um, food Tombow food nib brush uh, pen here. God knows what colour. They keep that a closely guarded secret. But I'm just going to add some definition. Lyra can print them on the barrels. I can't think why Tombow can't. They haven't got them on the barrels in anything, which is really frustrating. And this might be also good for a bit of texture. Because the centers do have some texture. They have some stamens there and each little stamen is on a long sort of stalk. I have some botanical words in my brain, but not all. So we work with what we got. It's quite subtle and that's what I really wanted just to give it a bit of definition there and then I'm going to come back in with a Tooley Art acrylic paint pen this is an extra fine point seven why I love Tooley Art is their colors are just amazing because I don't use bright colors very often if at all now we just put those stamens in and then the what I've just been doing will make more sense Again, I'm not aiming every tip to every brown stalk I put in there. I'm just making sure that mostly the effect is there. Now, finally, I'm not in love with the way that green ochre has gone on the petals. So just going to add a little bit here in the middle this one is a Tombow 026 you have fun trying to find the names of it I mean they're on the website where I bought them but it would be really lovely if they put them on the actual marker as well let's brush that a little bit there's a bit of toing and froing at this stage with flower painting because 
you may have to come back and strengthen one part of it. It's quite dark for what I actually wanted, but we can come back in here and come back the other way with this yellow acrylic marker and go over the stamens again building up colors are really really important and it's sometimes that's how you get to the strength that you're actually after this time i'm coming from the end back towards the center but i'm still effectively working in the direction of growth, even though it's backwards. This comes down here like that. Some of it's in shade, so you don't have to do that, but this will just knock back some of that Tombow marker, which is a little bit too bright, uh, too dark, and make sure that we've got the centres in properly. Okay. I'm going to grab a um, medium cadmium yellow. Let's see if that helps, because I'm, I'm not in love with the Tombow marker. It's too bright. That's not working. Let me try my yellow ochre from Derwent instead. Because I want the colour there, but I just don't want it to be... This is brown and yellow striped, this is, and I don't want that at all. It doesn't hurt when things actually happen like this, because then you can see how to fix them. What I'm doing is I'm going straight over the top of it and just colouring with a bit of yellow to knock it back, which more or less works. That's all right. Happy with that. Um, I'm also going to put some yellow onto the lighter areas of the leaves. I tend to do something in one area. I'll do it in a, another on the same picture because I don't like to just do something in one corner and not somewhere else. It doesn't make for a coherent picture. Just a little bit. Stems and... That's pretty much it. Okay, thank you so much for staying with me. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, yeah, like I said, that is Lesser Celandine and Becky is starting in the UK. She's going to do a different region of the world each month. So um, because she hails from the UK, she started in the UK, which is fair and reasonable. And um, I'm really enjoying seeing some of these little plants that are considered to be weeds and often trampled underfoot when you start to paint them they sort of come into their own and and it's totally different stories so worth the while so if you're on instagram have a look and see her 52 weeks of florals challenge and um yeah i shall see you next week with another one can't think what it is i think it could be scarlet pimpernel that's definitely coming up in January, but it may not be next week. So don't quote me on that. But I shall see you next time in the next video. Please have a great week and um, hopefully you'll get some sketching done as well. Bye.